Let's get right into the harvesting. We have so many things to grab and the amount of diversity back here, it's just unreal. Take a quick scope of everything. The tomatoes are growing incredible. So many different kinds of food. It's just, uh, I mean, it's hard to even keep up. Come in here first. Let's grab some of these green beans right here. Well, actually they're the red swan beans. Look at the color of these beans. Look how beautiful they are. Look at the level of production. It's insane. I love these fresh beans. So we're gonna grab a bunch of these so that they keep flowering. Look at these. And they have an, not only do they look really cool, they have an amazing flavor to them. I'll just try one real quick. Mmm, so good. See if Tuck wants one. I want a boy. He loves his beans. Yeah, this is the, just to let you guys know that this is good stuff. This is Tuck approved. Just let him have that one. So there's a lot to grab in here. We're just gonna take a few for that right there for now. Tomatoes behind me, insane amount. We're gonna grab those in a minute. But before that, let's get a couple eggplant. We've got an eggplant right down here, just hiding underneath the beans. Let's grab this one. This is the Rosita eggplant. Such a beautiful eggplant. One of my favorite all-time varieties. Heirloom, just excellent. And another one I tried for the first time this year, which is in a fantastic eggplant right here. This is the Listata de Gandia. And uh, check out how beautiful. Another heirloom. Look at that. Picturesque. <laughs> this is the stuff I mean. So beautiful. Just take a quick look at how nice that is. And look at the dragon tongue beans right below me here. These ones are just starting to flower, but I have another spot where the dragon tongue beans are further along. <laughs> looks like looks like we got the bean thief here. This guy's stealing all the beans right out of the right out of the uh, the bowl. He wants the fresh ones though. This guy, Tuck, want this one, boy? He's got to get the best parts of them. Yeah, he can be a little greedy sometimes, but he earns it. Let's keep moving though. There's a lot of stuff to grab. Before we do that, just swing around real quick. Check out the grapes. They're starting to set up, starting to finish. We're going to have some nice sets of grapes this year. Look at that. Look at the color. I'm going to try a couple. I'm just going to eat them fresh. We get in front of you. Nothing like fresh grapes right from the backyard. Tomatoes are so ripe, they're just falling off the vine. Crazy. Let's try the grape though. Mmm. It's already got that amazing sweetness. Oh. The mount ready is incredible. Look at some of those sets down there. Look at those. They're getting a nice shine on them. That's a good sign. So I'm not going to grab too many of them just right now. We'll grab a little bit later because we got to even more stuff we gotta start grabbing. Let's head into these two beds here, kind of where we started. So much stuff. And let's check out some of these peppers right next to us. The Zulu pepper right here. Nice production, nice dark like color on it, almost like the color of an eggplant. And really good producer. Has a nice pepper flavor to it. A sweet pepper, overall just a fantastic pepper, really good stuff. And then let's check out some of these beets down here. So they're probably getting close. Swing in here. Yeah, look at those, some of those beets. Try this one. Doesn't look too bad. We double sow our beets. You can see they're all double sowed there. So there's a lot of beets in here. Get this one. Nice size. This is the uh, the golden beet. When you bite into this thing, it's got a really nice color to it. We'll grab those. And then actually, I think I have some shallots still back here. The Monique shallot I forgot to grab. Let's see how those look. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the diversity of food in here is, it's like unbelievable. You can get like a whole meal, all different kinds of things, just from one little spot. I've even got basil back here too. And then let's check out what we've got in the front here still. Check out the white scallop squash. This one came up on its own. And I've got a, a lot of white scallop squash to harvest today, but this one just came up on its own. And look at all the squash in there. Look at the size of it. Look at that. This is an old Native American variety. Fantastic flavor to it. It's just, it grows so prolifically. Next year I'm only going to plant one or two plants because, I mean, they just produce nonstop. Let's grab some of these cherry bomb tomatoes. Really nice sets on them. Fantastic producer. And take a look at this the stem here. Look, we're lowering and leaning. Look how the stem is all bent. It's all bent like that. This way it makes it much easier to reach the higher ones as you go up. So this is how we lower and lean. And then look right behind is the Sunrise Bumblebee. Let's grab some of those. Such a beautiful color on these. I'll show you them as I come around too. Look at that. 
Look at the color on those. Nice flavor too, really cool tomato. So yeah, when we're lowering and leaning, you'll notice at the top, what we do is we just use these tomato rollers. We just let it go and it drops the plant down. This makes it so all the fruit is at an easy manageable height. Just makes the whole growing process more enjoyable and allows us to get more out of this space that we have. Super important. Check out the Super Sweet 100s. Really nice sets. A little splitting here and there, but overall you cannot complain with this level of production. And I mean, you go up, there's even more and more and more. It's crazy. They come over here. Hartman's yellow. A lot of nice tomatoes on here. In the back, might be hard to see. Look them down here. Might be hard to see, but because uh, there's so many tomatoes growing here. But look how densely we have these tomatoes planted. Ten of them per twer. Ten of them in ten square feet. We did that twice. So 20 tomato varieties in 20 square feet, growing fantastic. And one thing that I did this year that made a major difference is I hit them with a top dressing of fertilizer. I use my own fertilizer, the JP Secret Stuff. You could check it out at jamesprigioni.com. While you're there, grab a shirt too. Here's the summer grow shirt. Grab a shirt at jamesprigioni.com. But hitting them with that uh, top dressing of fertilizer as they started to go into production made a major difference. Look how we don't have any, any really tomatoes that are lacking nutrition good health, very little disease problems, just uh, I can't be happier with how the tomatoes are grown here. Then check out the black cherry tomato here. Nice color on those, really good tomato, delicious flavor. And then we've got even more tomatoes back there. Look at the sweet treats, look how crazy those sets get. It's got a few on the bottom that are, that are past, but look at these. Man, I love that. And then look it up a little more. <laughs> out of control production. But let's go behind us because we've got some tomatoes growing up stakes like the Lemon Boy Plus over here. Look at this production. I mean, start low down there, grab a set of these. Look at that. And then just as you go up, crazy. Just so many tomatoes, so I just gotta harvest all of them. But we're gonna harvest all of them as we move. Like, I'll show you guys the harvest at the end of the video too because we're just gonna grab a little bit here and there and then check out some of the tomatoes in this spot. Like the Sun Gold, my favorite all-time variety. Right here, look at this. Look at the color of those. I mean, it's such a striking tomato, but it's the, hands down, I would say the best flavored tomato there is. And then more of the Cherry Bomb next to us over here. You gotta have this one in. This one is good uh, disease resistance against late blight, so it'll perform well in, late into the season for you. Come this way. We got some stuff in here I wanna show you. Grab an apple in the back. We have got more beans here. This is a purple bean. These are really starting to fill in nicely. I really like to see that. And then over here, we've got some apples. I haven't had this apple yet. This year it's done relatively well. I did a good job of thinning it, not having too many apples. So what I'm gonna do is pop this apple off and get the first taste. It seems like it's getting close to finish. It came off really easy. So uh, let's see what happens. I don't think it's gonna have that nice of a shine, but we'll just sh shine it off a little bit. Not too beautiful, but I guess it's really about the flavor. So let's uh, let's see how it tastes. It doesn't have that pop yet. Um, a little green, but still good flavor. It's gonna be a sweet one, I can tell. Let me just drop it here for now, and then we'll swing over this way. I'll go behind you, but look at those pears. <laughs> those will be getting ready soon. Look at the amount of production on those pears. <laughs> Crazy. And then I'm gonna grab some squ a bunch of squash, heading in the back, cucumbers, all different stuff, so let's just keep moving. You go ahead. I'm gonna grab my, my harvesting bowl, which I know I always need a bigger bowl, but it's tough to carry it around. Check out the size of this Swiss chard right here. Look at the size of this. Look at even how thick those, Look at that, how thick the leaves, the stalk is, how big the leaves are, how healthy it is. I mean, uh, it's crazy looking. And then we still have all those tomatoes behind us too. We're gonna skip those for now, but I mean, there's a lot to grab. The blue cream berry, the sweet treats I showed you, the gardener's sweetheart with a really cute shape to them. And then uh, some of the, I forget if that's, that's the pink bumblebee. We already did the sunrise, but that's the pink bumblebee right there. And then in here, we've got this bonbon. This is a butternut squash. And I've never had any of these, but I wanna to try to harvest one. Before I do that though, look at the unbelievable sets on this thing. This is crazy. <laughs> look how productive that is. I just gotta take some of these whole rows. Oh, looks like this one was starting to go bad. 
I've got so many tomatoes that are ready, it's hard for me to keep up. So look at that. Really nice, and look at the sets as we move up there too. So many tomatoes. But even more impressive than that, in my opinion, is the mushroom basket. Look at that tomato over there. Look at that variety. Tell me those aren't some of the most striking, beautiful tomatoes you've ever seen. The shape, the crazy, oh, this one's going bad too. Man, I gotta get out here and harvest more. When you just got too much, sometimes it gets tough. But the beautiful accordion shape, here's a nice one. Look at that accordion shape. Look at the, it's got this incredible pink blush and it almost has like these little silver sparkles in the inside of it too. So, such a great tomato. Produces a bit late than some of the other tomatoes, but definitely worth the wait. It's uh, one of my all time favorite tomatoes, I would have to say, an heirloom variety too. And let's get that Bon Bon squash I was talking about. Notice in here, look how many we have. One, two, three, four. There's about 20 of them. So I'm gonna take one early because it looks like they're start it's a winter squash, so it needs to finish on the vine, but it looks like it's starting to kind of die off the vine a bit. So what I wanna do is harvest one of these, cut into it, bake it, and then see how it actually tastes. So let's just grab one for now. Typically you'd wait for this whole thing to die down a little more, but I just can't wait any longer because I, I wanna try one of them. It looks like it's about finished though, if you ask me. More tomatoes up next to me here. And then let's check out those dragon tongue beans I was telling you about. You can see this bed needs a little bit of water. It's really hot out today, super muggy, so uh, things are struggling a bit, but look at all the dragon tongue beans in here. This is hands down the greatest green bean you can grow, in my opinion. Not only does it look incredible, it's probably the best tasting. So there's some plants and vegetables that you grow that look really nice, but they don't taste that good, especially when it comes to tomatoes. But this right here looks incredible, tastes amazing, probably one of the best beans. Good indication of that is we didn't see the little homie at all, and then all of a sudden, once we start pulling out the dragon tongues, this guy shows up. Let me see, come here, boy. Come over here, boy. He's kind of fighting his way through. Come over here, and we'll grab it to him like this. Hey, let's see if he likes it. Yeah, it's one of his favorite beans. Oh, we want a little more? He didn't want that piece. No, I think he's all beaned out. But I'll have this one. Maybe he likes the red swan more, but dragon tongues are my absolute favorite. Such a good snap, such a natural like beany flavor, but really sweet too. Can't beat it. More things in here, but we're gonna skip all that for now. And let's move over to the squash. But before I even do that, I just gotta give you a quick peek at the sunflowers. Look how epic these are. Me standing next to it, if I put it straight up, look at the size of that. This thing is just the lighthouse for all the birds and all the pollinators and all the beneficial insects. Letting them know, stop in here, you'll grab some delicious food, some nice pollen, all different flowers, hang out by the other sunfl sunflower and just have an absolute blast. That's why we try to make it, this backyard, this garden, a paradise for all living things and uh, so many benefits that come from that. You gotta check out this squash though. Probably my new favorite summer squash. This thing tastes amazing. This is the Gelber Englishers custard squash. Crazy shape, beautiful color, and fantastic flavor. Probably my favorite flavored squash. I used to like the Castato Romanesco as my favorite tasting summer squash, a zucchini, but this is now my favorite. Look how productive it is too. One here, let's get another one down here. Another little one forming there. And then look at this, more hanging this way. Oh, that one fell on me. Look at it. <laughs> look how beautiful they look too. And I, while I was up here, I noticed we've even got a zucchini that snuck back there. So let's gr pop up and grab a zucchini. This isn't the Costato Romanesco. This is a different variety, I think. But uh, we have a Costato that's ready. I know that. Look at that. Whee! Summer's time, still time for summer squash. And then directly behind me, this is a more of the white scallop squash. This thing is so crazy productive. I can't even keep up. There, look at this one hanging here. There's another one on the other side that I never got. Look at this. Look how beautiful that is. And then just take a peek this way. Follow me over here. Look at the white, white scallop squash down there. Another one. And then back there, another one. And then right over here, this is like DJ Khaled. Another one. And actually while we're over here, might as well just grab this zucchini. I'll let you swing around. Still pr pumping out zucchini. Look at that. 
Let's get this one. This is the Costata Romanesco. This is the best, hands down. And then just for fun, let's take a peek behind us and check out the cucumbers hanging. I know I got some ready back here, surely. Oh, here's some here, another one here. And then, hey, why, why not just grab a cabbage right below us? Look at this, <laughs> the dead on Savoy. Hiding underneath it, just uh, so much food. Might as well just grab it because I wanna eat it. Take this out, just like that. Not to mention all the grapes behind me. Truly a food forest, paradise. Definitely some ants in here, but we'll be fine. They won't go after the cabbage, but uh, endless food. This is only half of the garden. One thing I wanted to mention is, so many people ask, how big is the backyard? How much area, space are you growing in? So the whole property that I'm on is one third of an acre. And I essentially garden on about one third of the property. So I would say my planting space is about one ninth of an acre. So it may look like it's actually bigger than it is because a lot of the fruit trees and stuff make it seem larger than it is, but this isn't the as big of an area as you might actually assume it is. We just stack things. We grow in so many different layers. So uh, it allows us to get more out of the space and it's so much fun to grow like this. And you can see the incredible level of diversity. Let's swing into the other garden when we have so many more things to grab and all different kind of stuff. Let's continue the harvesting. Check out how many tomatoes are on this plant. This right here is the Jolene. This is a determinate variety, but just look at the production on this thing. So many tomatoes and they look beautiful, really uniform, nice colors. Just uh, look at all of them, it's fantastic. It's even making Tuck a little excited. What do you think, Tuck? I gotta harvest all these because there's just a, uh, they're just ripe, I can't let them get over ripened. But I'm just super impressed with this plant, really happy with it. You guys got to try this one out if you want to grow a determinate variety tomato. And what I didn't notice was I've got some massive cucumbers that are hanging right off the plant in the back. I didn't even see it. Look at the size of this thing. <laughs> That's past ripe, unfortunately. But uh, tell me you haven't seen, I mean, have you seen a cucumber bigger than this? This is insane. It's so thick too. Look behind me, even more big cucumbers. This one is more at a good eating size, even though it's big itself. And then even the Corinto cucumber in the back, there's a bunch of them ready back here. So we're still getting a lot of cucumbers. It's hard to keep, keep up on all the harvesting. Let's swing around though. We got some other stuff we wanna grab. Hank, go over this way. And look at the apples right here. This is the Liberty apple doing real nicely. That's later a little, I mean, ready a little later in the season, so they're definitely not ready yet. And then let's check out some of the Zucchino Rampicante over here. I'm just gonna point at some of the stuff because this can get really long if I go through and harvest every little thing. But here's some of the Zucchino Rampicante. This can be harvested as a summer or a winter squash. I think it's also told, called the Italian squash, a really good one. Swing over here. Sweet potatoes in containers. The Mountain Magic Tomato after that. Really good pr producer. Eggplants to my left. Look at those white eggplants, beautiful eggplants in there. More nice eggplants, orange eggplants, purple eggplants. So, so many different things. Then a lot of nice tomatoes to my, right next to me over here. More super sweet 100s, berries, crazy cherry. You gotta plant that one if you haven't. Over here, so much production. <laughs> tomatoes back there. Look at the butternut squash. These are almost ready too, look at the color. And then look at there's another squash right over there, underneath there. And then we have more bonbon. We kind of let the, if you notice back here, we let the squash kind of trail us all along the ground. And then the tomatoes are growing up through that as well as the trees. So we're just doing our best to get the most out of the space. And then these potatoes need to be harvested. We're gonna do a video on that, but I have potatoes in a different location we're gonna go harvest. Before I show you that, come this way. Check out the cabbages in here. Three beautiful cabbages ready to be harvested. And we're replacing a lot of this stuff in this bed, so we'll be grabbing those cabbages soon. Swing over here. Let's actually grab some potatoes from here. So a lot of potatoes are starting to get ready in here. We're just gonna, you're supposed to dig a potato up, but I'm just gonna pull it out like this and see what we find. Oh yeah, it looks like some nice potatoes in there. Look at the size, oh baby. Let's see what we got, look at this. Look at this. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I can't imagine how many potatoes are actually in that in this bed. Let me see if there's any more left in here. Oh yeah, still more. That was only one plant. 
and we're getting all these. Check it out. So we're gonna have some massive potato harvest this year. From this bed, I'm just grabbing them kind of day by day whenever I feel like eating them so I can stack on them. That other bed, I'll get them all at once. We'll stack all of them out and just see how many we actually got from it. Let's keep moving though. Let's head over here. I wanna show you some peppers in the beds over here. And I wanna grab a Chajiro pear because they're starting to get ready. And then maybe take a stop, see how the boss is doing. What do you think, little homie? Getting pretty warm out here, huh? This guy never quits. Make sure you spam some hearts down low for the little boss, the young king. This guy never quits. You can see he's panting because it's pretty hot out here. So we're gonna try to make sure we don't keep this video too long. Let's uh, go check out the peppers after we just get a couple pets on this guy. We just have a few more things to grab before I let you guys go. Check out all these peppers I'm growing in pots here. A bunch of different kinds. The health on the peppers is amazing. They're really starting to produce heavy. Come over here, some of the banana peppers look really nice. Take one of these, even though it's probably a bit early. Really nice looking peppers. More over here. Here's the habanada pepper. This is a ha sweet habanero. They're gonna turn orange, but it's a habanero pepper. It just doesn't have the heat, which is pretty cool. But we are growing a bunch of hot peppers too. Like the, I think it's a pa paper lantern pepper. This is a hot one here. And we're growing the hot peppers in pots, so Tuck can't get to them. We don't want him eating any hot peppers. And we've got some nice peppers over here that are just about ready. Some nice sweet ones too. I'm gonna snack on these. But one thing I wanna show you over here is the Chajiro pear. This thing's starting to get ready. I made the mistake possibly of leaving, leaving a little bit too much fruit on it. Even though I thinned it out, it just uh, still has a good amount of fruit. So what I'm gonna do is look for some of the big ones that are kind of ripe and uh, just snack on them to kind of thin it and also get a harvest at the same time. Let's see, this one looks pretty good, has a decent color to it. When they're really ripe, it'll be like bright orange. So this one's still not perfectly ripe, but I know it's gonna still be good. So let's taste this real quick. Mm -hmm. Still really sweet, nice pop to it. And then over here is a different variety of pear. These ones are ready, because this is a multi-grafted pear. This is a 20th century pear. They, these ones are relatively small, but really good flavor and just overall delicious. Let me get a taste of this. Soft, incredibly sweet. Mm. The Asian pear, so it's almost kind of like an apple, but a really good pear flavor still. Fantastic. We're gonna go around and harvest all the stuff that we kind of passed by. There's some stuff that I still didn't show, but I don't wanna make this video too long. So that's today's video growers. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you got something out of it. Me and Tuck had an absolute blast out here. Do not forget to spam the hearts to show the love for this guy. I mean, he never quits. It's super hot out here. Sometimes I just gotta go in because this guy's actual, actually loyal to a fault. He works a little too hard. So uh, we gotta give him a break. I'll also give you guys an update in the future on how he's doing with his health. But me and Tuck wanted to mention to check out the merch down at jamesprigioni.com. Grab a grow shirt, grab a gardening life shirt, be part of the team. Also hit the join now button below if you wanna be part of the team and help support the channel and contribute to what we're doing out here. That being said, we wanted to mention a thank you to one of our newest channel members, Nicholas Brenner. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. Thanks for having your hand in like all the fun things we're doing out here, all the snacks we're grabbing it. It means the world to me and Tuck, so uh, we really wanted to thank you. We had a great time. If you enjoyed the video, share it with your friends, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and, uh, and I know we just said it, but sharing really helps the video. So if this is a message you wanna get out to more people to grow their own food in their backyard organically, to mimic nature and to just learn every day from it, then make sure you share this video with your friends. It's super valuable for us. Tuck and James will be back again real soon. We out.